Okay, so now we have a bearing capacity example. What we will do here is use the ultimate bearing capacity equation, also called the Terzaghi equation, and we will find the allowable bearing capacity at the very end. So let's read the question. We're told we have the base of a strip footing is located at a depth of 3 feet below the ground surface. 3 feet below the ground surface. The width of the base is 5 feet. So the footing base has a width of 5 feet. The groundwater table is located 15 feet below the ground surface. From the ground surface we go down 15 feet. That's where the groundwater table is located. And we're told the footing rests on a soil with a unit weight of 115 pound per cubic foot, a C value of 280 pound per foot squared, and a fee value. So fee here is 36 degrees. So we'll define these as we solve the question. So for this fee value, we're given these coefficients. So we know when you see these, you're going to have to use that ultimate bearing capacity equation, right? Because that's where those are employed, the Terzaki equation. So we have to use these factors when we solve the question. And we're told if the required factor of safety is 3 for this question, the allowable bearing capacity in kip per foot squared is most nearly what? Okay, so here we want to find the allowable bearing capacity. So what I'm going to do first is write this as what we want to find, right? So we will find the allowable bearing capacity, and this is going to be Q allowable. So the way you can denote this is Q allowable, ALL. The equation for that is going to be what? We take the Q ultimate, so the ultimate bearing capacity, which we find using the equation in the handbook, divided by the factor of safety and I want to note that this is not provided in the handbook you should be very good with this and you should know this equation all you do is take your Q ultimate divided by the factor of safety and you get your Q allowable if you're actually given the factor of safety and that's what we want to find here so we will find Q allowable by using this equation and we know this depends on Q ultimate so the Q ultimate equation is on page 264 in the handbook. So that's the new FE handbook 10.0.1 and we go I can go down here but before the before introducing the equation let's quickly talk about types of shallow foundations. So this is just to give you a visual view of the different types and we're strictly focused on sh shallow foundations. So here we have a square one the B and B values are the same, right? The width is the same as the length into the page, essentially, in 3D. And that DF, again, is the distance from the ground surface all the way to the base of the footing. And we have a rectangular foundation here, B and L. We have the T value, the thickness of the footing. And the footing, just to know, is this portion, right? Just the bottom portion. This is the stem or in certain cases the wall so this is but let's focus on the footing so the footing is always the bottom and this is the thickness and df is from the ground surface all the way to the bottom and we have another type it, it may be circular and the one we want to focus on is actually this a continuous and to know that the ultimate bearing capacity equation in the handbook it says it it, it defines B as the width of strip footing. Just note that strip footing is continuous. So strip footing is the same as continuous footing. And this is the type we will focus on here. So we have a bearing wall and this is where the load is induced and the footing is going to be the bottom. And we know continuous footings we always apply this equation, the Terzaki equation, or in the handbook, it's called the ultimate bearing capacity equation on page 264. So page 264. And it's used to find the bearing capacity for rough, shallow foundations. The equation, note, is only applicable for continuous or strip foundations. Continuous strip, same thing. This means it's a foundation whose width to length ratio approaches zero. So you just plug in the length divided by the width and it approaches zero. 
essentially the length divided by the width. The width in this case is going to be the B value, right? So we plug in the length divided by the width. Let me just make sure this is right. It's the length divided by B and it should approach zero. And that's what a continuous or strip foundation is. And this is the equation we will use. It accounts for the soil cohesion strength, the surcharge pressure at depth, and we have the footing pressure with respect to the unit weight right at the top and then we know that the groundwater may also have some effects and we will talk about this as we solve the question when we actually get to it but just know this is the end goal is to use this equation to solve for Q ultimate and it's in the handbook so let's go back above and we wanna begin with the solution actually let's write what we're given first then do the solution down here I want to write what we're given because we have a lot of information in the paragraph and this is common on the FE so you should extract the information visualize what's happening and then go to your solution always visualize or draw a picture so in this case we have a strip footing let's draw a strip footing and typically we draw it in 2D meaning 2D I'm gonna only look at this portion right this face so let's only draw that face in 2d and we have something that looks like this again we're only working with continuous footings or foundations so this is the ground surface on top so this is our ground surface and that's the foundation and we're told that the base of the strip floating is located three feet below the ground surface so this distance is going to be this and that's going to be three feet and what value would you attach to this what variable it's going to be defined as a df it's the depth of footing below the ground surface so this is our df value so we have that now we also are told that the width of the base is five feet so this is five feet so this is the B value so B equals five feet okay we have we're told the groundwater table is located 15 feet below the ground surface so it's very it's all the way down here but let's denote that we go all the way down it's about 15 feet so this is the mark for the groundwater and this distance is 15 feet and I'm gonna give it a variable DW just to stay consistent with the figures we have down there and we're told that 15 feet is taken care of the footing rests on the soil with a unit weight of 115 so the unit weight of the soil down here so this soil is gonna be 15 115 pound per cubic foot and we're told that the C value what is C C is cohesion right the C value for the soil is 280 pound per foot squared and lastly we're told phi what is phi phi is the internal friction angle for the soil is 36 degrees and that C value corresponds to these bearing capacity values, right? Based on the Terzaghi model. So typically you find these in a textbook, in a table, but they're provided for the purposes of this question and in re relation to the FE exam. So these are the values we will use for the bearing capacity factors. And we're told the factor of safety is 3, right? And that's what we will plug in here. So the factor of safety that we will use is 3.0 so we have that we have everything we're given and let's begin by using and the ultimate bearing capacity equation and solve for Q ultimate so Q ultimate equals to C and C plus the gamma prime so it's the effective unit weight gamma prime times DF the depth to the base of the footing we have NQ NQ is defined as the bearing capacity factor for depth NC is the bearing capacity factor for cohesion 
then we're told plus one half or 0 0.5 times gamma prime, the effective unit weight, times B, it's the width of the footing, times N gamma. So N gamma is defined as the bearing capacity factor for unit weight. So we have all of that, and all we do here is plug in everything. But before we do that, I want to quickly denote that this effective unit weight actually comes into play for more complicated questions. It comes into play when we have something like this. So the groundwater table we know is unlikely to be above the base of the footing. This is something we always want to avoid, right? Because it reduces the sheer strength of the soil. So this is something we want to avoid employing certain drainage techniques and methods. If the water table is indeed close to the footing, we will have to adjust the ultimate bearing capacity by using the effective unit weight. So we have to use the effective unit weight instead of the regular unit weight. And here we have three different cases. So for case one, the depth of the water table is actually less than, than the depth of the footing. So this is the first case. And the effective unit weight, we have to take the total unit weight minus the unit weight of water. So this is what we would have to use in the ultimate bearing capacity equation this value for the effective unit weight and for case two it's going to be this equation so the depth of the water table is below the depth of the footing so this is case two so this is not in the handbook so you shouldn't expect this they should they might provide you the equation or they'll just tell you to use whatever unit weight just for the purposes of the FE exam and case 3 is what we're actually working with in this case the depth of the water table we know in our case is 15 feet it has to be greater, th greater than or equal to the depth of the footing plus the B values the width of the footing so if we add this and compare this this should be greater than this and we have case 3 and in this case the effective unit weight is just the unit weight so I just want to introduce this just to clarify what happens to the unit weight when we have groundwater effects where the groundwater is close to the footing so we have that but in this case we know we're gonna again use this right so the effective unit weight is the unit weight we have case 3 in this case and we know we have case 3 once again this is 15 feet if you add 3 plus 5 you get 8 so 15 is bigger than 8 so we do indeed have case 3 so here we just use what we just use the gamma value that we're given for the FE exam I believe it should be that simple so Q ultimate is the C value C value we said is 280 this value pound per foot squared so the NC value is provided in the problem statement so it's 26 point two so I got 26 point seven seven so we have that then we have plus this is the effective unit weight but we know it's the unit weight as we stated so it's 115 pound per foot squared cubic foot sorry it's pound per cubic foot then we have df df is three feet and q we know is going to be the 13.97 then we have plus one half or 0 0.5 we have the unit weight which is the 115 pound per foot to the third so this one right B is gonna be the five feet five feet and the last one is n gamma and n gamma is gonna be the 9.41 so I'll just write it here 9.41 so this is the n gamma value so now we just plug everything in so here if you look it we should get out pound per foot squared right this is foot to the third this is foot this cancels this so we get foot squared here pound per foot squared the same here pound per foot squared so the final unit should be per q ultimate our pound per foot squared and i believe 
we should get 15020.625 pound per foot squared. So here it's pound per foot squared, but we're told we want kip per foot squared for Q allowable at the end. So let's convert that to kip per foot squared. All you do is divide by a thousand. So we have 15.02 kip per foot squared. So we have that value and we should pick a yes no, that's incorrect, right? Because we want to find Q allowable. Q allowable is Q ultimate divided by the factor of safety. So our allowable for design is Q ultimate divided by the factor of safety. So Q allowable, we take the Q ultimate value of 15.02 kip per foot squared. And the factor of safety is going to be the 3.0, right? And that's given us the, in this case. And if you do the math, we should get 5.00 kip per foot squared. So this should be our answer. And just to note that it's kip per foot squared because it's that force per foot squared, per cross section of foot squared, meaning if we look let's focus on this per foot squared of area right so essentially you're looking at this area or the bottom area this cross section it's that much per foot squared of this section and that's what we should get it should be five and the correct answer is d i hope this helps please subscribe and like and let me know if you have questions thank you